tuning in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. Johnson. Johnson. TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! And hello, everybody, to another edition of After Buzz Scorpion uh, Season 1. We're still, in the se- we're still in the middle of Season 1. Can you- it's hard to believe, right? Yeah. And uh, this is Episode 2. The name of the episode is Single Point of Failure. And uh, the song we're listening to is a song to close the episode, Looking Too Closely by Fink. And joining me from last week, and we have an addition, too, but let me start with last week, is <laughs> Monsi Bolanos. Yes. Hi, everybody. Hi. And next to her, we have joining us for the first time. So it's like the Marina first time. Marina Santos. Marina Santos, everybody. Ah, yay, yay. I'm awesome. Glad to be here. Very excited. We exciting. do everything together. I know. Everything. 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 You're, you're like joined at the hip. Pretty we could much. not separate them. No. Except my hip is like her chest area. Yes. Okay, well, that's semantics. Uh, but, <laughs> and you weren't here last week. So apparently you can be separated, just not too often. Not too often. Yeah. Not too often. Just not after Buzz, really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we, we were playing the song from the uh, end of the episode because, we, well, we finally got to hear or see the intro. Right. Pilots usually don't have intros right away because they're obviously putting all their money just hoping that a network picks them up, but we got to see the intro. What do you guys think of the intro for, uh, I guess, what's gonna we're going to see every single week? I it, liked it. It yeah. just was quick. Yeah, it was very fast, but it was to the point. It, it, it got the oh, message yeah. out there, and mm-hmm. it was a very quick summary of what the show is about. Exactly, and of each description of each of the geniuses. Yes, they mentioned them. They mentioned them all pretty much what we heard in the pilot. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sylvester being the human calculator, uh, this Toby being the uh, behaviorist, mm-hmm. and uh, Happy, Happy being the mechanical pr- progeny or pro- prodigy. Prodigy. Like, prodigy. 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 I can't no, say I can't that say word. Say I can't say that word. Prodigy. See, the show is too smart <laughs> for me. <laughs> this show is too smart. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, I, I, overall, I really did like the show. I liked the intro. It was very interesting, the narration and everything. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, at the very beginning, and I want to bring this up, too, because there were comments on on YouTube and on iTunes as well, uh, inspired by the uh, life of Walter O'Brien, which we didn't really touch into too much, and there were a couple of people asking and and commenting. So I wanted to be clear, we di- we didn't we just really went for the recap last week. Right. But yeah, this is actually uh, at, at least the, this is inspired by the life of Walter O'Brien, and uh, and the joke that I kind of made last week about starting in Ireland to cover up uh, Elias Gabel's accent uh, didn't go too well with one person. So yeah, uh, <laughs> yes, Walter O'Brien is from Ireland, and uh, yes, uh, there. there there will probably be some instances that really mirror his life, like uh, him getting uh, busted for breaking, for hacking into NASA mm-hmm. uh, when he was a kid. So we definitely will uh, be bringing more of that up. And we didn't really get to talk about uh, the executive producers in general, but um, just a side note, we'll talk more about that in the coming weeks. But let's get back to recapping the show. Uh, this episode started with another flashback yes. in Ireland, which was very, very interesting. We got to see uh, Walter in uh, school and kind of like, um, kind of like what happened last week when he was listening to the radio. And uh, the question on the on the game show was how many how many which month has uh, twenty eight days? days and he's like all of them and yeah. uh, the answer was really February and he calls him a moron mm-hmm. uh, but he, but he's right every right. single month has twenty eight days yeah. just some of them also have more or yeah. all of them yeah. have more except they in didn't February. specify they didn't say which month only has twenty eight days yeah yeah exactly so this this in this uh, flashback kind of the same thing so uh, the teachers like which of these numbers is divisible by four. And the answer, of course, what? if you're Walter O'Brien, is oh. all of them, yeah. even if they're an odd number. So, <laughs> so I thought it was a really interesting look at 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 him as far as how relatable he is in school. Even his right. teachers thought he was kind of like a smart ass. What do you guys yeah. think of uh, of seeing that little picture of Walter? <sighs> It just, honestly, it brought me back to being in Catholic school, and I was like, if anyone would have hit me when I was in Catholic school, I would have, mm. <laughs> So I just, it took me back to that, but I liked it. It yeah. showed how his entire life, mm-hmm. he is the person he is today. Or yeah. at least the person we're seeing, you know, in the show, and I I, I like it. I like seeing mm-hmm. the flashbacks. Absolutely. 
it makes you feel for the little boy. This yeah. genius boy who's about to get smacked with a ruler or a stick or whatever Absolutely. it was. I mean, it's really interesting when I was actually doing a little extra research on Walter just because of the um, people who commented last mm. week just to be a little more prepared. And he talked, and actually it was mentioned in last week's episode, high IQ, low EQ, mm -hmm. uh, low emotional uh, intelligence. And part of that is actually the inability to really, um, like your internal monologue is really not there. It's just, yeah. it's all external. So you have no problem saying things that would be insulting to other people right. or just be mad. Kind of like that IT guy that's always like, you know, when you're getting your IT fixed and you're just like, oh, you're such a moron. It's yes. like internally you might be thinking that, yeah. but these are the guys that'll say, you're a moron. <laughs> and here he is pretty much telling his teacher, yeah. you didn't define your terms. You're, you know, right. it might as well said you idiot. You idiot. Yeah. They all are divisible by four. They just have remainders in yeah. them. He, they just have. He has like no filter. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. The filter you that can't relate to regular, you know, yeah. to other people. <laughs> to us. To yeah. us that are not as smart as him. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> if you're watching us, you can see the face that Marina just put on. Uh, but, very duh. But you know, I can't imagine as a kid how difficult that was. Oh, you know, yeah. as an adult, I, he's obviously learned how to deal with it. But mm. as a kid, you just think of yourself as different, not mm -hmm. not like in a good way. Yeah. Right. You're yeah. just different. Why don't people like me? Why is it, this teacher mean to me? I'm yeah. just saying the truth. Well, it's interesting. The kids didn't seem to really be, a, maybe because it's Catholic school and they don't, mm -hmm. back then at least, yeah. it was probably more likely not to answer kids back or it was probably a strict school yeah. or else you get you know hit with a ruler. But uh, the kids didn't really comment on it. It was the teacher. And if I was the teacher, I probably would have been impressed that he was able to divide exactly. that one number by four like right like there that. on the spot. Right. But no, he it was like an ego thing and he got all pissed off at, uh, at Walter for showing him up. Yeah. So, but to the rescue, sister, his sister, big sister, I assume. I, well, taller yeah. than him. Taller. I'm, I'm guessing. I, I'm still, guessing yeah. big. We're going to go older sister <laughs> and yeah. smart in her own way because yeah. she pulled a fire alarm to stop him from getting hit. She mm -hmm. she somehow knew. I don't know. If, it's weird. She wasn't in class with him, but I guess she knew. Yeah. Right? Because that was the way the confusion was in the beginning. It, it might be one of those things that, you know, your your big sister or brother always look out for you. Right. I know yeah. my brother did it in, in, in school when I was little, so she was probably always, she knows no. how smart he, he is and his difficulties, so she probably looks after him during school time. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, uh, we, we see that little nice little moment of them running out of the school together mm -hmm. and being a little rebellious, and, uh, and then we get to present day, and we see Walter seeing this note, and we find out the girl's name was Megan, mm -hmm. and we figured it was the sister based on what they were saying about you know calling dad mm -hmm. uh and she's apparently suffering from uh ms we find MS. out mm -hmm. so really sad tender moment with walter a human connection he had as a kid and uh, we get to see some emotion uh, we get to see a lot of emotion from walter in this episode as a result of seeing that flashback and seeing that right. letter about his sister and i thought it was really really touching considering how um, blunt Walter can be. There were some really good moments. Yeah. Uh, you know, what do you think about, about what you're seeing from Walter, specifically as far as his emotional, um, as emotions in this episode? I think every episode we're going to see him be a little bit more, yeah. have a, uh, more of a human connection with others, especially now that Paige is in his life along with Ralph, mm -hmm. because maybe nobody has ever made him want to be more emotionally connected with humans. Yeah. And she does. Mm. But I think this episode you see a little bit more. And yeah. I think that every episode that's it's gonna be like a slight increase. Not a ton, because mm. there are times when he doesn't know how to yeah. control his actions or his emotions around people. Mm -hmm. But I think thanks to her, he's becoming more normal. I, I, it's not even like the word isn't normal, but more well, we empathize. Yeah. We empathize with them more. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I think what's interesting too is, uh, I mean, we see later on the flashback of him looking at his sister still mm -hmm. as a kid mm -hmm. in the hospital bed mm -hmm. when he when he when he sees the governor's daughter a little bit later on, and I think it's it goes back to him caring for Ralph right. from last week's episode and this week's episode. Him reacting, he definitely has a very soft spot in his heart for kids. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, and I almost feel like that's how he relates to he relates to his sister as that girl who helped him out in school and then got terribly sick. Right. That he couldn't do anything about as a kid. Yeah. He made a comment about that. He's like, I felt like I was handcuffed and mm -hmm. I couldn't help the situation. Exactly. So, yeah. Someone with a high IQ like him and he couldn't figure that out. Yeah. Even for, with all the good that he is doing or has done or all the amazing things that he has done. Yeah. So, absolutely. So, uh, we definitely get to see, you know, what I thought was interesting too, it, it was probably just a little thing, but it, it was almost like a foreshadowing, is we see uh, Paige with Ralph and Ralph was sick. Mm-hmm. 
but he was really just pretending to be sick. He he manipulated the uh, thermometer. I wrote yeah. it down here. I don't know exactly what he did, but he did something so that he hacked the thermometer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, so he would appear sick because he hates school, which I thought was interesting. It, it goes back to uh, I think Walter's memories of school and mm-hmm. being mistreated, uh, and it also kind of leads to where we're going, which is about a sick ki- about sick kids. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was nice. I like the way they kind of put Ralph, yeah. like the sweater last week, they kind of put things yeah. in perspective with him and put him in the middle of it so you can kind of see what's happening. Um, one thing that was cool, since this is the second episode, we got to see everybody get paid. Yes. The first paycheck. <laughs> the first Exciting. paycheck. They were so desperate for money. They were mm-hmm. hacking electricity. They were, hack- they were trying to steal electricity off of somebody else, and now they all get paid. So it's nice to see um, what everyone's thinking about the money. Yeah. And uh, Toby... Because uh, we know we know he's a bit uh, you know has a bit of a gambling problem, mm-hmm. uh, you know everyone's automatically like don't don't go spending it in one place, <laughs> yeah. and he puts which I thought was a really funny bit. Um, he triggers his his phone. Awesome. With right? his heartbeat, right? Yeah, with his heartbeat. Because apparently when he's in high-stress situations, that's when he's gambling, or that's when it triggers his gambling addiction, and uh, it it goes off like a donkey. Yeah. When uh, when he's in high stress. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, really, really beautiful, you know, really awesome little thing. And, of course, Happy's having fun with it. Really smart to do yeah, that. Exactly. I feel people should just do that. Like, when you're drunk, <laughs> your phone should say, you're drunk, don't send texts. Yeah. <laughs> There's an app for that, actually. There, is there? There is an app that asks you to uh, solve like math problems and certain things before you're allowed to like send emails and text messages. Oh, I don't know the name. I can't remember the name, but I can have it by next. I've week. heard. I've heard of that. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. It's It's kind of like their version of a breathalyzer in a car. Right. It's like in case you do a drunk text to somebody, yeah. like a like a like a crazy ex or or you know exactly. like a booty call or something. Which which actually Toby probably needs too. It, it yeah. Does, yeah. Based on Stalker. what he's the way he's acting, stalking. <laughs> His ex fiance, yeah, and uh, really just checking up on her, just yeah. making sure no she's biggie. just making sure she's okay. But if you think about it, I mean, Toby, this sounds awful, but he's the perfect person to gamble because yeah. he's a genius and he's able to read people yeah. better than anybody else. So he. I, I'm guessing he always wins most of the time, but people think he's cheating. That's what's interesting. I guess, yeah, because we saw him last week running was, away because he, he was able to read their tells. And yeah. they were, these were like bad guys, gangsters, I guess, who are, who were chasing after him. So mm-hmm. I'm guessing that, yeah, you're right. I'm guessing that he's the kind of guy who you'd love to take to Vegas with you and bet <laughs> on everything win. he does. Just win for yeah. me. Bet on it. Yeah, just win for me. Here's some money. Just yeah. win for me. Here's $10 turning to 1000 if please. He's, but if he's allowed in a casino at this point, he's probably, right. he's probably, he's probably banned not. in yeah. every single casino. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, pretty interesting. So I, it's almost like, is it really an addiction if you can't lose? That's true. That is very true. And then why why are they always so damn broke? I know. <laughs> I mean, Seriously. But, except for now. Now that they're working under under Homeland Security, they're probably not that broke. But uh, but yeah, an interesting. Again, we we I, I love this. We're getting to see a little bit of the onion off of every character mm-hmm. a little bit. So um, anyway, let's get uh, let's get into the case a little bit because uh, Gallo comes in and tells them that the governor of California uh, wants to meet with them. So they go over to the governor's house, and we saw some of these in clips uh, last week mm-hmm. uh, for clips of this week. Apparently, uh, CDC is there, Center for, for Disease Control, which means it's a big deal. Sylvester, we saw, was a big germaphobe last uh, episode, so it was obvious to see him run off. Mm-hmm. He's and, hilarious. Yeah, he's hilarious. And then, uh, and then, of course, Toby, uh, Toby ends up getting nervous too, and you hear the jackass uh, yeah. go off, which is funny. And Happy goes, "I still hear the jackass, even if the alarm's off." Yeah. So, um, so they step out, and uh, we get to see uh, what the cause of it is, which is uh, the daughter of the governor is quarantined, and uh, and. Uh, yeah, she's quarantined, and it brings Walter back to memories of his sister. Mm-hmm. So, which is, of course, really sad and really touching. And we get to see, you know, and and, and again, Walter, he has no filter. <laughs> has no filter at all. The way he's talking to the governor yeah. as if he's just, you know, a, an object in his way, stopping him from doing his job. Uh, Walter doesn't like the fact that it's need to know, even though it's pretty, even we could figure out mm-hmm. that was probably the governor's daughter. Yeah. It wasn't like some random homeless person who walked in. <laughs> right. And yeah, and they all of a sudden they wanted to care for this person. Yeah. And uh, yeah, through some work they find out, you know, through some really good ingenious investiga- investigation, uh, Walter figures out that uh, the virus was, there was a computer virus that was also on the daughter's computer. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't on all the computers, it just affected one. So uh, it was hacked to specifically target uh, the daughter's computer. And they figured out that the virus was very similar. It was also hacked to to um, only hit the daughter. Mm-hmm. So in some big dramatic motion, he opens up the curtains, everyone starts freaking out, and everyone realizes 
they're not contagious. Right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I, I love I love this idea. I don't know if an, another show or procedural has done anything like this, but I love this idea of biohacking to the individual. Yeah. yeah that's crazy. I, I, is that real? I'm, I don't oh, know. I, I don't you, know. That Just seems, one yes. person? From, yes. Yeah. According to Stephen Lemieux, our, uh, our engineer, uh, our producer. He, yes, Just he recently, can. a guy has put in a heart monitor in his own arm. Just by cutting it open and biohacking it. Oh, really? Wow. Well, I know there's such thing as biohacking, but biohacking a disease, though. Like, like specifically that. for one person only. Yeah. yeah, for one person so that only one person gets sick. In other words, like putting, like, like well, what they did was like an aerosol, it looked like, or mm-hmm. at least for, for, yeah, that was going to be for the governor, but putting something uh, out where we can all inject it or, or, or breathe, breathe it, it or whatever, and only one person gets sick yeah. because it's specifically it's hacked to that person's DNA. DNA. I don't know if there's any real life cases, but there's a lot of shows that play on that possibility. Yeah. Interesting. It was really good, though. You know, yeah. It was a really good, it was a really good, um, yeah, I just, I just loved the way they discovered mm-hmm. it and the way it came out. So, uh, anyway, we get to see, uh, um, through figuring out uh, the email, which it was obvious that whoever did the email was an incredibly smart person. So they figured out that it was coming from some hub mm-hmm. of hackers. And we get to see Walter again. He, he went over the line a he little bit. He just bumps the guy. Yeah. yeah. Well, first of all, it's just amazing to see Toby work. Like I, I went, when yeah. Gallo was like, we're here looking for someone who said, and he, you know, you know, he's like calling it out to a bunch of hackers who obviously yeah. hate the law and don't want to be around the law. And it's like, what a dumb move that no one's going to say anything. And Toby's yeah. like, guys, shift the eyes in the corner, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Describes him to a T. And then Walter tackled him. Yeah. So, um, again, Walter really taking this personally. He's treating this case as if it's his own sister. Uh, really touching t- touching move. I mean, Paige was very, very surprised. <laughs> I think she was a little turned on. I think so, too. I think she was, too. She's I, I, like, what? He was like, ooh. <laughs> well, a little shock. And, you know, speaking of Paige, we do, we do get to see throughout the episode, I think at one point before, where she is coaching. You know, like, she, she jumps in between Walter and the governor yes. when he's kind of being really rude to the governor mm-hmm. to to you know just give her sympathies yeah. to Diffuse him. the situation and defi- kind of, yeah it yeah. totally helped the situation yeah well, that's her job right yeah. that's why she's there that's that's what we determined from last week what mm-hmm. her job would be but it's 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 good to see that yeah. actually to see that yeah she needs to she actually needs to be with them no yeah. matter what <laughs> yeah because you never know who they're gonna piss off yes yeah, <laughs> yeah. so and she needs to be all nice and sweet and you know be like i'm Catherine mcphee you yeah. may have heard of me no but I, it, you may have heard of you me. may have heard of me and not I'm just deal. lovable uh-huh. and uh, <laughs> well not like that but still um, yeah so anyway so we we get to see Walter in a little bit of action that's our big action well one of our big action pieces for the show and uh, from getting the hacker uh, we found out that uh, it wasn't just the governor's daughter that was targeted it was a bunch of other it was three other targets at least or three emails sent out and they were sent out to um, Children from Vlasco uh, Pharmaceutical Executives. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I have the names, but they're not that important. But yeah. the, the point of it being that around 2008, um, these people were um, in the process of developing Trexacane, mm-hmm. which was to help uh, prevent spinal muscular atrophy. And it got discontinued. It got redeveloped for asthma, and they discontinued the trials for, um, for SMA, which uh, obviously got some people a little upset, in particular yeah. with some somebody out for revenge. Mm-hmm. So at least they had a lead. Uh, unfortunately, uh, one, one thing I didn't mention, kind of like last week, a very small time frame to complete all this. So there's yeah. a lot of high pressure. Yes. They had less than 24 hours before the daughter died and maybe the other three kids died, or the other two kids died. Uh, is it two or three? It's three, three other people. Three, three yeah. kids, four, four kids total. total yes. And then That's right. The so, yeah. So anyway... Uh, I'm rushing through this, sorry. Uh, so yeah, so four kids. And, and again, uh, you know, it, this obviously hits, it hits your heartstrings, doesn't oh, yeah. it? Definitely. Like, what kind of person would do that to the kids, you yeah. know? Like, I don't think revenge in general is the way to go because it's like, again, we just, people just think it's gonna fulfill you and it really doesn't. Yeah. But go for the kids, come on. I mean, what kind of, it, it, it just, I don't know, I felt cowardly. It's oh, like yeah. a cowardly action to go for the kids. It's not the kids' fault that, uh, that you know, these executives yeah. discontinued. And we don't even know wh- where it went down from that. But, uh, yeah, it's very, 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 very sad. Now, my question is, would he let the kids die? Or would do you think he would have given them the antidote? No, I think before. he was going to let them die. I, I think so. I mean, based on the virus that he sent on the laptop, it's your fault she's sick. 
-hmm. Even though it was sent to the daughter's laptop, it was obviously meant for the, the governor, adults, governor. the right. governor to see, like in that case, at least the governor to see. So, um, but you know, that's the one thing that well, we'll get into that later. Mm -hmm. That's the one confusing thing about this guy's um, motives mm -hmm. and, and this guy's plan that they kind of, uh, I thought was a little odd, but I'll get into that when mm -hmm. we get to the point. Um, you know, anyway, this is probably a good time right now to talk about iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> but before we steamroll along. Uh, so, yeah, this is our second episode. First of all, thank you so much for those of you who caught our first episode, who tuned in on iTunes, who uh, wrote to us on iTunes or YouTube, who rated us. Thank you so much. Uh, I, you know, we were one of the top rated shows on AfterBuzz uh, for the week. And, and it's obvious Ooh. that this show is uh, is uh, doing really, really well or else people wouldn't be interested in listening to us banter about it. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, we'd love to uh, get hear some more from you. Uh, you know, like I said, there was some feedback from last week about talking talking more about Walter O'Brien that we're definitely taking to light. So love to hear more from you. Uh, and please rate us. Give us five stars. It, it really, uh, overall, it helps the network. It helps us in our other shows. We have over, God, I think 50, 60 shows at one time that are being recorded here just from After Buzz alone. And, uh, yeah, it helps us to keep the lights on. It helps us to bring guests in that I'm sure you'll want to meet and see on the show, cast members, stunt people, behind-the-scenes people. And, uh, yeah, and it just it makes us feel good. <laughs> um, at the end yeah. of the day. And, and actually, you know what? And you get some shout outs. Like, thank you very much to, to the people on iTunes who, who rated us and wrote in Big Boss 375 and Jason uh, 34456. And uh, then there's a bunch of people. I'm going to mess up names. Uh, Al Duriana <laughs> was the one, one of the ones who mentioned about uh, Walter O'Brien. So hopefully, um, you know, we'll talk about uh, that a little bit more. But thank you very much for commenting. X Plain Jade. Uh, I can never say your name, dude, but it's Man Toshans, and I'm going to say it wrong. Felicia Reyna, Gilly Bean, uh, Ticket T. Tick Ticked Tea Lady, and I can never say your name right either. Chaos13212, Movie Fan, and Pugs Bella. Thank you very much, guys. We appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. That was tough for the names. It would take yeah. me like an hour to say them. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I probably missed half of them up, and you'll see, and they'll be like, we hate you now. Um, but. Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> I did the best I could. Uh, but thank you again. Thank you so, so much. And uh, we'd love to hear more from you guys. And let, let us know what you think of this week's episode. And you can tweet at us. We'll, we'll give Twitter information later. Uh, anyway, so this part of the, the show actually gets to one of the, the more fun parts of the show mm -hmm. because uh, they, Vlasco is not giving away any of their information, or at least they won't in time to save anybody. Mm -hmm. They're stonewalling. So... Um, Walter comes up with a plan from looking at a food coupon <laughs> to hack into uh, their firewalls mm -hmm. by having someone click on a food coupon and then uh, getting somebody's information and having Sylvester, who is the least likely person to probably go on a recon to go in <laughs> infiltrate like enemy lines, to, uh, to go in. In undercover, right. so I think this was. I don't know about you. I I just loved seeing uh, Sylvester. Sylvester freak out over this whole thing. Yeah. Oh my god, it's so good. It's so interesting to watch him. He's so scared of everything. Mm -hmm. He's always trying to bail. You know, he wants to to stay back and watch. He never wants to take the responsibility. Mm -hmm. But it just amazes me how truly scared he is. You know, his phobia about like germs and drinking like <laughs> things from other people's fridges or even touching doorknobs yeah it's, it's hilarious his little comments throughout the episode just it it, it makes it so much better mm -hmm. right yeah it's funny because i have no issues with i i'm terrible it's like i don't even think twice about this doorknob that doorknob like i don't think twice about that i I clean and wash my hands, but like outside of that, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, this this mic or this pillow, whatever. It's probably all contaminated, and I don't even think about it. So watching him on the show, I'm like, oh, well, should I start worrying about what I touch? <laughs> yeah, it's it's a little creepy. Well, right? of course, I mean, if you're walking to a biohazard lab, maybe you you'd be a little more sensitive to right. it. But yeah, I mean, seeing him last week at the diner, freaking out over germs, like that yeah. was the big thing. Like, how many? How, you know, we all right. needed diners, I think, yeah. right? I, I believe everybody yeah. has at one point in time, but they don't really think about other than when the food comes out. If it comes out a little messed up, you don't really think about germs. Yeah. And as long as the place is well kept. It's all about mm -hmm. presentation. It's all about presentation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, but we, we get to see him really get freaked out because he's going into a pharmaceutical company where they're obviously doing trials mm -hmm. on diseases and on they have all sorts of viruses there. And, I, and it's partly that and it's partly just him doing that. And he's the only one who could apparently do this because... Uh, there's no way he can do what Toby and Happy do. Right. And, uh, and yeah, and uh, Gallo can't go 
win because then it'll be a crime if he gets caught. And uh, and Walter is doing schematics. He's mm-hmm. he's doing a schematic feed to um, to whoever's going to pull it off. Right. So uh, again, really really funny. As far as uh, we get to see Toby and Happy uh, play a married couple or a dating couple. <laughs> yeah. And uh, some of the fighting, you know, was obviously staged, but some of yeah. it felt very real. <laughs> yes. They obviously have this very interesting banter, and and Happy keeps remind you know talking about. Um, about Toby's uh, Toby's infatuation with his ex fiance mm-hmm. yeah. and uh, and and all the fighting that they have and and again I just love Toby just the way he just reads people when they finally figured out the guy and they got the guy to come down to uh, to check on his car mm-hmm. he's like newly divorced right and he's just like totally reading this guy yeah. uh, it's a little it's a little like in your too in your face for the guy obviously mm-hmm. oh yeah for a second he's bonding with him and then he's like okay I gotta get out of here. Mm-hmm. But uh, really interesting. And then here's the one thing I don't understand. And I had a problem with Sylvester last week just because of the whole eraser thing, which somebody I didn't get to rewatch it. But somebody claims that, um, that he Sylvester did clean it yeah, with an I eraser. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure about that. I didn't get a chance to rewatch it, but I'll take your word for it. But um, <laughs> so Sylvester has a photographic memory. Mm-hmm. So which I get, but it's still he still has to take the time to look at every single page and go. And why? I mean, wouldn't the camera be a little bit faster other than the fact that if you get caught, you get caught with a camera. With a camera. But in this, in the case of this story, if he got caught, he would have been screwed anyway. Oh yeah. So I don't know. Just a little interesting. Just I, he's he's brilliant. He's got a smart mind, but just relying almost a little too much on the on the yeah, noggin. Yeah, like you have a phone, take a picture of it. Yeah. Something. Yeah, yeah it'd be a lot faster to just go bing, 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 bing. Yeah. And instead, he's like, okay, okay, and moving to. I I kind of felt looking at him do it. Like I'm sure. Hell. Mm-hmm. I could not memorize that much information that fast, but mm-hmm. still, I almost feel like. And then you can print out copies. Yeah, and, and, we and can you can all read it. Because they all had, yeah, because later on, they all had like some kind of printouts or they had information. Yeah. They're shuffling papers around. Yeah. So, like, just to him to input all that data, I would have thought camera. Yeah. Yeah. So, minor. I agree. They probably just wanted to emphasize how, how smart he is and the amount of paper he's able to memorize, yeah. you know, but. But you would have been a lot more useful to just take a photo of each page. Uh, yeah. So just a thought. But uh, but still, time. I get the intention. No, I get the intention. So maybe I'm just being a little too too uh, technical on the whole thing. It's, you're thinking like a normal person. Yeah. That's it. That is what it is. I'm thinking like a normal because person. Because you're thinking, if I was in there, uh-uh, that's a ain't new... nobody got time for that. I'm just going to take a picture of it. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, you know like, that's, totally. that's what it is. It's not that you're being nitpicky. It's yeah. that we're thinking we would never do that. Yeah. <laughs> we would never go in there and try. Are you kidding me? I can mm. barely remember my name. How am I supposed to memorize all these people's names? No, no. But that's what it is. That's what it is. <laughs> okay, well, that's what it is. Well, anyway, we, we end up uh, seeing that Toby could not hold uh, the employee uh, down in the parking lot for too long. So we see uh, that, I guess, the ID that um, that they're using only works only works for uh, Sylvester as long as he checks out after mm-hmm. he checks in. Because if two people check in twice without anyone checking out, yeah. it creates an alarm. So really interesting. I've never worked at a place like that. You know, sometimes, you know, you leave an office, you never really check out and you keep checking in. But in this place, it's very it's very high tech. Yeah. I I work at Universal Studios and we swipe in and out. Oh, you do. We do swipe in and out. But if for off the record, if for whatever reason, I got a a ride off the premises and didn't swipe out the next day when I come in and swipe in, it doesn't do anything. That's completely off the record. Off Uh, the record. Completely off the record. Ever, ever, ever. Like, I just know that that could happen. Yeah, places like that, it does sometimes happen. You go out a different way or whatever. Yeah, exactly. There's different exits, but I've never had issues. And I was like, all right. Well, a pharmaceutical company, I guess, has a very, very high security level. Yeah. So just very, you know, very tedious probably go, oh, I got to check out of work again. Yeah. And, you know, especially if you're doing a back and forth thing, like going to the parking garage to check on your car, coming yeah. back, it could be a little pain in the butt. For us, that's how it is. Like, if I want to just go to my car, yeah. I just swipe in and out every single time. Really? Every single time. Oh, that must be, that must be a pain in the butt. Yeah. So, well, anyway, so, uh, <laughs> so this guy, obviously this guy's irritated too, because he comes back. I mean, of course his car just got slammed into and he, yeah. he has no idea what's, he's trying to exchange insurance information. His supervisor's calling him back up and then he comes back and he swipes. And the guy's like, you're already inside the building. And he's like, 
I'm not. <laughs> Does it look like it? <laughs> and he is really like Toby pegged him. He's like somebody who's already look, looks angry before yeah. when they were picking the guy. So he he he's definitely angry. So of for, of course the worst possible situation for Sylvester happens. He's gonna he's in danger of getting caught. And the one place he doesn't want to go that Walter said you're no in no way you're gonna go near a biohazard lab. The one thing that Walter doesn't want he has to do he has to yeah. open the door to go into a biohazard lab. And uh, again, really, really cute, really funny seeing, uh, you know, seeing him, you know, struggling with, well, first he gets in, it takes a lot for him to get in, mm -hmm. but then he's stuck in there and he will not open, he will not open the door to get out. Which is crazy, because it's like, if you don't want to be in there, why yeah. are you lingering and looking around? Yeah. I found it so funny that he was contemplating, like, it seemed like he was like, no, I'd just rather get caught. Like, this is yeah. not worth it for me, yeah. being in this biohazardous area. But yeah, he couldn't get out. He was looking around. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wouldn't you want to run out of there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just run for your life? I would totally, yeah. I would, if I'm scared to death of someplace and I have to go in there, I'm going to get out of there as quickly as possible. Yep. I mean, I get it, you know, you, if you touch that thing for a second, it's it's microorganisms, you're going to get caught no matter what, mm -hmm. but you're still just he's lingering. Already in there. Yeah, he's still in there, so. Yeah, what if there's a leak yeah. in one of the other, in that room or something's going on? Just know. get the hell out. But what was interesting was, and we, and we got to learn a little something, Paige coming to the rescue, because Walter just can't convince him to get out yeah. and Paige talking to him about something to look forward to look forward to what's he going to do with the money and he's like I, I can't remember the exact line that was hilarious. but it was something so like I, give it away. Give it away. I just want to get rid of it I don't like I, I have a version of money I'm going to get rid of it or something money like that money makes me nervous money yeah. makes me nervous yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah so obviously obviously money doesn't inspire this guy he didn't pay the bills last week because he was yeah. more concerned about crunching numbers than paying bills but uh, she convinces him to open the open the doors if he's giving away money. Yeah, he's <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> right? And, and we, it's still silly. Yeah, <laughs> but he has like his whole arm wrapped in his like say. long sleeve shirt. Yeah. You notice it's like he pulled the sleeve as far as he went, like mm -hmm. wrapped it to like touch the thing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he at first he didn't even want to do that. He's like, I can't. A cotton blend uh, uh, sweater is not going to work against this. Yeah. It was like, oh my goodness, really? No. <laughs> like, just go. <laughs> just totally go. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, luckily uh, he gets out of there. They end up uh, saving him and rescuing him and then going out. And they have all these files. They shuffle all these papers. That who knows how long it took them with 24 hours to do all this mm -hmm. information. But they did. Um, that's all I'm going to mention. <laughs> Sylvester's rubbing his hands still during the whole thing because yeah. he's still panicking about the hand whole experience. Sanitizer it's a huge all. thing of hand sanitizer. Yeah. Right? Not the like pocket one. It's like no, he, as big as him almost. <laughs> so pretty crazy. And uh, they start looking into uh, who you know who from these clinical trials had the most to lose. And um, Toby. I thought this was interesting because Toby, who's so smart and so spot on, goes for the guy who lost his fiance. Right. Considering he also has an issue right now with this episode with his ex-fiance, mm -hmm. so he goes for he goes for that guy. He's like penniless. He was in six figures, penniless, and the fiance. I kind of I, I kind of figured it had to be someone with a kid. Yeah. And yeah. You, you know we all agreed on that. You didn't have to be you don't have to have a high IQ to probably figure that out. And right. of course Gallo comes over and says his kid lost his kid. This guy lost his kid, Robert Richter, and he's also a professor, I believe, and he has he has the capacity to have the equipment, the uh, the genetic sequence to create this yes so they go visit him in his office they discover uh, that he had computer modeling spray patterns so mm -hmm. they figured that somehow uh, he was at least transmitting the virus through aerosol uh, through the air and uh, they notice all the you know and, and they called him a modern typhoid mayor I thought this was really interesting and this this is, again goes into the psyche of Robert Ritker he, he wanted revenge his kid died four years ago 2010, but he was waiting for technology to cap catch up to yes. his revenge, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, I don't know if most people, if their their kid died and they blame someone else, would wait patiently for four years. I mean, I think they resent them for yeah. the rest of their lives. Um, and I don't think he was just sitting and waiting. He yeah. was definitely thinking about it nonstop and trying to figure out ways and come up with ways to do it. Yeah. And so I'm sure you know a, a parent would spend the rest of their lives you know it's revenge yeah it's finding more, trying to yeah. find a way not, not, that, not, that it, not, not that it's the right thing to do obviously no no but it, it's something you know losing a child is just not supposed to happen right it's mm. like yeah 
It's very difficult for a parent. Well, I guess revenge is a dish best served cold. So I yeah. guess four years is pretty darn cold to yeah. be serving some revenge. Yeah. But uh, but still interesting. But uh, so we find out, and it's like 15 minutes left to the episode. They figured out what the information they pulled on the kids. Yeah. They've saved the day and saved these kids. And everyone starts to celebrate, and then, uh-oh, uh -oh. There's, there's a catch. There's still 15 minutes left in this show. Yeah. So there's got to be a catch. And there was a fifth, uh, there was a fifth uh, person that he was targeting. Yes. And they didn't have a picture, but they figured out through everything that it was the governor. Well, mm -hmm. actually, I think they, they, did, they did end up having a picture. It just didn't come up uh, right away. Yeah. Um, and they figured out it was the governor. The governor was the fifth target, and this was a different kind of uh, virus. Yes. One that would kill instantly. Stop the heart. Stop the heart within seconds. Mm -hmm. So yeah, kind of creepy, kind of scary. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And 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 you know, to be honest, this whole thing is scary to know that somebody has this kind of access to biohack, you know, somebody personally, mm -hmm. and and just make them ill. Mm -hmm. You know, again, this the, the way this is going to go down is he's going to meet the governor, and and the governor's going to die instantly, and nobody else around this guy mm -hmm. is going to die because it's engineered toward his DNA. So, that's. That kind of pulls on you a little bit, like a little, oh, like yeah. a scary little thing. Definitely, the way terrorism mm -hmm. can be. Um, well, the way you know, the way the way they theorize it, at least. But anyway, so uh, we discover that while they're trying to contact the governor, he's not picking up the phone, because uh, as Walter figured out, Victor wasn't in the office because Victor was going to go meet the governor mm -hmm. and and tempted him with the antidote. Yeah. So uh, they run out to Marina Beach Plaza. Which I think I know that area. It's not really Marina Beach Plaza. I think that's that's the um, I can't remember the name of the building, but it's in Beverly Hills. It's a well-known <laughs> building in Beverly Hills. And uh, they go off to rescue the governor. And uh, you know, again, a little a little high action from from Walter. They're mm -hmm. all running to to save uh, to save the governor. And uh, and Homeland Security gets there just just about in time. So we think to uh, tackle the guy mm -hmm. without Walter's help. Walter didn't tackle him, but uh, Homeland Security tackles the guy, not before he sprays something up in the air, missing the governor, but like, it's Very literally close. like, it's floating, it's, it's we like, can see it, it's like, ah. it's like you could, you could reach out and probably get it on you, uh -huh. yeah. yeah, you know, kind of like people who spray perfume and then walk through it, it's probably like one of those things, like he makes one wrong turn, or the AC uh, shifts in right. any kind of way, dead governor. And we didn't understand this, but of course we're not that smart. Yeah. Uh, you know, not as smart as someone yeah. with 197 IQ. But uh, Walter ends up uh, setting off the fire alarm ingeniously, mm -hmm. uh, and because I guess the water was going to affect the composition yeah. of the uh, of the um, of the spray before it. I think they said aerosize. I can't remember the word he used. I don't it, remember. Yeah. But it said it would take 10 seconds for it to. I want to say aerosize, but uh, forgive me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. A lot of long words in this, and I can't. I can only write so fast. Yeah, um, yeah it's only ten seconds, and they were doing a countdown as right. if it was like a bomb going Sylvester off. Sylvester was like, "Now seven seconds." And yeah. So on, yeah. So and then so the the uh, fire alarm, uh, the the water extinguishers, the water um, extinguishers go off, and I think that's what you call them. Um, again, not smart. And uh, and. Fire it, extinguishers. Fire, not fire extinguishers. Those are those things. The, the water. I don't know. The fire alarm to set off the water. He sprinklers. Made it rain. Sprinklers. <laughs> Thank you. That is so not an SAT word. It's a super scientific. I word. I know. It's super scientific word. Oh, sprinklers. Too funny. All right. No oh, <laughs> Jesus. Um. <laughs> anyway, so the sprinklers go off, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm. You know what? I'm gonna be honest. First thought is, all right, Catherine McPhee, in a mall. Water spraying all over the place. Okay, let's get some close-ups. Let's get <laughs> let's get some good shots of Catherine McPhee. Come on, if you guys feel were that same waiting, way about were you waiting for a wet t-shirt contest? Uh, not a wet t. I don't know. I was just thinking. I was just thinking that that might be uh, not just for me, but that even be a moment like that the day has been saved mm -hmm. and and Walter looks over and sees Paige kind of looking sexy all wet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so he wanted a Carl's Jr. commercial. Yeah. I, I, yes, I wanted her to eat a. I wanted in the middle of this water sprinkler system. I wanted her to eat a big burger <laughs> a in slow motion, <laughs> all like all drenched in water. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds good. I'd watch that commercial. I'd go get a Carl's Jr. after that. Scorpion, you hear that? You should get a sponsor, Carl's Jr. Carl's Jr. Yeah. And, get, and have Catherine McPhee as Paige do that scene again with a burger. Yes, uh, <laughs> absolutely. Um, <laughs> but anyway. So uh, Walter saves the day, and I think actually when we did see Paige, that really got her. That was the moment we saw that little close up in her eyes. Yeah. She was like, oh. yeah. she might as well just put her put her hand under her and just just tilt. St I can't I can't look as good as her. I'm not gonna try it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. 
Yeah, and oh, canning. Well, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. I paid you for the, to say that. Uh, so anyway, that leads to at least uh, Walter saving the day. All the kids uh, have been rescued, and uh, and and uh, Robert Ritker is in custody. And for the epilogue, we see some interest. I think we see a lot of really interesting uh, exposition mm -hmm. on several people. First of all, we see Gallo is interrogating or mm -hmm. interviewing uh, Ritker, mm -hmm. and he takes his jacket off, throws it on, uh, on I guess, on a space phone, mm -hmm. uh, on a phone, and it ends up uh, triggering uh, the phone so that uh, that everyone else on the team can hear him talking. Now, you know, we know that um, from last week we could tell that Gallo and Walter don't get along from their past. I mean, they're, they're, they're getting along now, mm -hmm. but they obviously have a past together mm -hmm. where Walter didn't trust Gallo. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, at first, I actually, I don't know about you guys, but I thought that maybe Gallo was going to say something really bad. I thought so, too. I thought he was going to be a bad guy. Like, yeah. Yeah, you know, like say something like, I'll let you go, we, we, or, or the plan didn't work. Or, or yeah, or like, oh, we're going to use your technology to kill people, you know? Or I thought something. he was going to beat him. Or maybe even that, like something to show something really, really bad. Yeah. But instead, they, they, it, it ended up being a very touching moment yeah. where, um, and I think on many levels very touching, where, where uh, Gallo was talking more or less about his own, his own kid. Right. You know, seeing his own child and not being able to do anything about it and be feeling helpless, mm -hmm. which I think humanizes him. It shows that he has a lot in common with Walter in that instance, you know, uh, as opposed to Walter's sister, mm -hmm. Gallo's child. And uh, yeah, so I thought it was really, really touching. And you see Paige, you know, obviously Paige is the, the one that has the most empathy out of all of them. Yeah. So she's mm -hmm. obviously really touched. And they, they end up shutting it off. And then I thought something bad was going to happen. Then I was going to say, okay, now we'll, we'll talk about yeah. it. But no, we'll save that for maybe another episode. Another one, yeah. But uh, yeah, I thought that was really touching. And we saw some other stuff, too. Like there was that little, um, I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, Paige is trying to get Walter to come upstairs. And yes. uh, it felt like a date mm -hmm. yeah. at first. Yeah. It felt like a date. Aww. Yeah. Aww. I'm gonna I got a telescope for Ralph and I'm gonna go grill some was it burgers or hot dogs? I'm gonna go I'm gonna put on the grill and we'd love you to come. Oh I know. Steven, that's wonderful. That's yeah, wonderful, that Steven. That's so good. But Walter didn't take the bait. So yeah, yeah, he didn't take the bait for whatever reason. Um I mean we end up seeing him go in to visit his sister. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe that's she's still on his mind. So obviously he's not thinking for love. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we see some interesting stuff. Sylvester, who said he he has he's nervous around money, he wants to get rid of it, and we saw him do something nice. He donated three thousand dollars. Three thousand dollars. I know that's uh, not even like I don't know I don't know if he just gave the whole thing away. I'm guessing he did or yeah. what. But yeah, to to a bunch of nuns. I'm I'm guessing it's an orphanage, because mm -hmm. um, that's the typical stereotypical thing you would you would probably give <laughs> uh, money to nuns for for yeah. operating an orphanage. Hopefully, they don't beat anyone with knuckle with their knuckles with, with rulers. Yeah, uh, <laughs> like in Ireland uh, back <laughs> then. But uh, yeah, I thought that was really really touching. We see, um, you know, one thing I didn't mention because we didn't talk much about Happy, but um, something she was talking about in the car, mm -hmm. uh, which I thought was interesting about her father. Mm -hmm. Giving her away yeah. in the hospital when it's just two. Another another like childlike trauma. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of childlike traumas there. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and she said, and the, the one line she said is, it's like no wonder I became this kind of person. Tools work, people mm -hmm. don't. Yeah. And I thought that was interesting because then at the very end of the episode, she's working on, on her, her bike. bike, and her I guess that was her wrench. Yeah. yeah. It broke. It, so yeah. Uh huh. And she all of a sudden is like has this look on her face like, that's not supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, like it was like a realization for her that if if the opposite is true on both sides. So anyway, yeah, so we see that and then we see um, and then uh, what else? And then the last thing I guess I mentioned Toby's girlfriend or fiance calls, calls and says, I'm moving on. Yeah, uh, you should, too. And uh, and we see him gambling. We don't you know. So and then and then the one thing I just want to bring up because we got to wrap up. And we're going a little long is, uh, you know, Gallo tells Walter that having a family can make you vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And then we definitely see the whole family. We see how Walter tracks the family, but it also can be a good thing, too. So we see a nice little happy moment with everybody yeah. up on the roof. So what do you, overall, what do you guys really quickly? I guess so what do you guys think? Uh, I mean, really good show, I thought. Good yeah, episode. Good episode. I thought so, too, especially because we're starting to get to know more each individual. Individual, yeah, you know, and not just their, you know, geeky, super smart side, but also their personal side and why they are the way they are. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I like the way it ended with uh, you probably forgot 
to mention at the very end, yeah. uh, Walter gives a note to Paige. Oh, yeah. As, yeah. as Ralph is looking through the telescope. Mm-hmm. And I love that moment yeah. because he's literally helping her. Uh, deal with her genius son. Yeah, connect you know? with him. Connect, yeah. I thought it was really touching too. And again, it shows it shows how Paige is helping Walter in the real right. world, mm-hmm. and Walter is helping Paige with Ralph. Exactly. So very, very lovely. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're running a little long. So we're gonna, I guess, we're gonna skip predictions. I don't know if we had really much. Yeah. Still kind of early to yeah. figure them out. Yeah, totally. But we'll definitely have more information. We didn't talk about ratings or anything. We'll have a little more time next week. We'll next talk. Week, hopefully, yeah. we'll start earlier. Uh, anyway, where can we find you, lovely ladies, during the week? All right, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Rena Brazil. You guys mm. can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Monsi Bolanos, M-O-N-S-E-B-O-L-A-N-O-S. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Nandovel, N-A-N-D-O-V-E-L. You can also find all three of us on various shows. I know you're doing Gotham, Monty. Gotham, yes. And I'm doing Blacklist and Walking Dead and Homeland. So there's lots of shows you can choose from. Please rate and comment. We'd love to hear from you from this show and for all shows. And until next week, we'll catch you then. Thank you very much. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.